Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is uh, June 11th, 2023. Howard, how was the movie uh, uh, debut? You know what? It was very exciting. Uh, I don't think I'll, I can't imagine I would participate in another movie as deeply as I did this, but uh, very exciting. This is not financial advice. You know, our goal is hopefully to be picked up by one of the streamers um, and we, the, the feedback at the movie was great. Um, Tribeca is an amazing experience and it was a fantastic day. Thank you, man. Great. Yeah. I mean, I would hope to see it at some point. When Me too. I, I mean, when at, at some point, if we can't sell it to a streamer, we would put it on iTunes for people or YouTube. So. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. By August, I think it all, you know, if it doesn't sell by August, we come up with a plan to sell it through iTunes or ads on YouTube. Good. Now let's talk about the markets. I think, uh, I mean, one of the major definitions of a, of a bull market is the bull market correct through sector rotation. And last week we, we saw exactly that on the days when the large caps would pull back, small caps would rally, and vice versa. So we're definitely seeing that rotation and kind of negative correlations between small caps and large caps. Obviously, keep in mind that in the past few days, uh, we started to see a little bit of, maybe not a little bit, but a lot of fraud in the market. Mm -hmm. Every time when you see like really big laggards um, rallying, that's usually right before uh, we see a pullback. So we had like Beyond Meat and GME and and um, Blue Apron, like all of those dogs. They just once in a while they they pop up and they they go back down. Uh, yeah. Usually when we see that, usually you know that's a sign of really of really frothy market. Yeah. And considering that. The FOMC meeting is on Wednesday and multi option expirations is on Friday. I would not be surprised if we see some form of a, just a sh quick shakeout, just to remind people that, you know, um, trading and investing is not easy and, you know, it's there are a lot of traps along the way. Yeah. What's uh, your well, take? Well, there's a lot of stuff to digest, right? And I think the biggest thing is tech has had a good run. Why? They have earnings. The big tech companies have had a good run because, first of all, the numbers are staggering. You know, Apple sells. Apple is a mix of LVMH and Hermes. And obviously, Apple itself is a brand plus technology and very vertically integrated. And they're going to have their own AI chips, right? So they touch on everything that's working other than the degenerate economy. But in a way, because of the App Store, they are DraftKings and Fando. They take a rake off pretty much to the degenerate. So they're taking their rake off the degenerate economy. They have the Apple wallet. They are banking now. Um, they, are, they are holding deposits. I mean, it, to be honest, if you your own, like I said, if you own more than the, the top 10 stocks in the country in the country that are performing well, maybe you're over diversified like if you own more than apple you might be over diversified obviously that 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 blow that blows my mind because they used to say google should be your tech etf but in a world where now tech you if you want to diversify out of tech and into fashion um really if apple bought a couple of liquor companies in a vaping business uh <laughs> Uh, you know, they would probably be the only stock that I would recommend people should own, much like a lot of people own Berkshire Hathaway. And by the way, if you pull up Berkshire Hathaway, I think it's at 52 week highs. And aren't the banks supposedly a shitty business? Um, I mean, it's not just a bank, they own so many businesses. So, no, but you know what I mean? In a world that Berkshire Hathaway has done so well, being a financial company, is it could it could Tim Cook and whoever's next not run? A business that's chart looks the same way and why are we even bothering with ETFs than if owning Apple so if if Berkshire Hathaway is a perfect representation of financial uh, Apple may be the with now banking may be the perfect uh, growth idea for the, the the modern Berkshire I used to say that about Google 
Mm-hmm. But, you know, AI might change. Anyways, that's what's going on. What's the your take on Apple's, on. Uh, Apple's new uh, product, the Vision yeah. Pro? Well, it's, an, it's an incredible fashion product. But Ivan, let's now pull up the IPO index. So I'm fascinated by this because there is a lack of supply. Like you're not, the companies aren't going public. So at some point that will change. And that chart, oh, where are we at? Yeah, this is the one that I followed. Okay, and so that is interesting to me because it's not run by a person per se, like a, like a degenerate Kathy Wood. There's a process to this, right? And we have basically gone nowhere for six, seven years. So supply is being sucked out of the system or the new supply that came in was not good enough or, or, or growthy no. enough for people to care about. Okay, so if there's going to be a new cycle, the, fir- the first place this will show up here and we're not there yet. So a really good market will have IPOs. What's now further in favor of this upswing, even though it's in a way backwards and it's going to upset a lot of people, is that the government has got their eyes set like they did on weed on crypto. So if we were to look at a Coinbase chart, we now know why the company can't bounce. Uh, you know, uh, they can't bounce because the government is is basically treating this like a tobacco company or or like a weed company at this point, or like they taught, or like they taught, or like they taught, treated the gambling company. The weird thing here, Ivan, is that they already approved this. So the government is like completely overstepped its boundaries, or at least Gensler has. It's got to be a congressional thing, not an SEC thing, because this is the same SEC that approved this. Okay, so knowing what we know, you could argue and scream at your computer all day or the government. Or you can move your money to something that has less headwinds. And that's pretty much everything but crypto. So what I don't understand about crypto is the behavior of smart people thinking that this is going to end anytime soon. America, for whatever reason, and at powers that are much higher than you and I, or Chamath, or David Sachs, or Fred Wilson, or Mark Andreessen, or Chris Dixon have the power over, has said not only do we are we against crypto we are going to look back and figure out who else uh, has been breaking the law why would i take fresh money that investors give me and speculate against the government right or wrong i hope people make a fortune and i hope i'm completely wrong but you have this uh, agenda to at least in the united states step that to stop that back i think that's really fantastic for bitcoin and ethereum long term because if america hates it that's going to create demand at some level and the people that need to get their bitcoin because the world the world is ending uh, have an extra reason to get it but crypto needs network effects and if you can't grow the network at some point you know bitcoin will lose volatility and trade more like uh, a commodity and not a growth vehicle. So what's good for Bitcoin and Ethereum is really not great for the people trying to make money in Bitcoin and Ethereum because we need the US, okay? And then the second thing is, even if you think you're smart enough to invest internationally, if you're set up in the United States thinking that, you really, I think, are lying to yourself. Uh, It is a whole different world to deal in international business. I also think if you want to be in private markets, the U.S. market's the best place to be because that's where corp dev happens. That's where all the visionaries are. And, you know, if you've got a struggling company in Poland or in Czechoslovakia, uh, it's not as easy to do corp dev. So, again, I hate to say it, but, like, if you're speculating in, in shit coins and in stuff that the SEC doesn't like, I think you move your money. This is why i think these are good things for the for the actual stock market because people have less choices the speculators will have less choices i think it's super good for gambling because somehow gambling which in many ways is so awful for for the behavior that it's going to create amongst athletes gamblers you know addiction um it's basically got a green light and no one cares so you know, skate to where the puck is going. 
the the investors that in the private markets and i know a few that have been spent the last three years investing in gambling infrastructure i'm a little bit jealous they are the new owners of the degenerate economy and while we were out there speculating on weed and on crypto DraftKings is and mgm bets in the casinos and igt broke out out of like this company like was left for the dead how do you you know if you saw a chart like that and you see a chart like Coinbase, I'll tell you where the fresh money is going to go, right? So, so again, don't take it personally, but you've got to you've got to use your eyes and ears and follow the price, and not the headlines. It's not whether Gensler's right or overreaching, or if you love him or you hate him. It just is, and I ain't fighting that at this point. And in yeah. fact, yeah. And in fact, I mean, I think it get worse if you have a Coinbase account. You know, what are you, you going to argue? Oh, I'm not worried if Gensler shuts it down. Like, what? you know, I've told some friends like that call me and ask for advice. I'm like, I'm not pulling a little bit of my, my little bit of money out of coin, but, but if that's all your crypto money, yeah, you should. The point is, the whole point is to learn to have stored it anyways off the network. So you should put it in off the network. Why are you holding it in a centralized or a decentralized exchange? The whole point of Bitcoin was to make it, you know, sensorless and to to allow you to permission get it wherever the hell you want if it's a coin base and the government says you can't get it uh well good luck fighting them and tweeting about it and sending emails to your friends complaining about it but like you're, you've had all the warnings you can't i do think this is my speculation is ivan is that the government if we were to look at inflation you and i both see the numbers it's dropping is it not yeah, yeah it is yeah it is dropping Okay, but rates are staying high. And I do think in a normal world, without crypto speculation, the government would already be cutting rates. The Fed would already be cutting rates. And my my thinking might be that they're waiting to put a final hammer in a lot of these speculative areas and weed won't get approved. And uh, crypto will we'll just see nothing but a fight. The other problem I worry about crypto, Ivan, is that like, all these people tweeting and whatever and thinking they're important, they're not going to get to the streets and demand their crypto. If you live in America, you don't need crypto other than to play games and speculate. So no one's going to be out there fighting for crypto in the United States. People have other worries, much like marijuana. You know, if you really want marijuana and it was illegal, you smoked it in your home. If you really want crypto, you'll build something great and just maybe, you'll, it, it, you know, good luck. Web3 is, is a real thing. but you are not going to have the capital that you once had to support you because the capital is going to flight to places where people feel they have less friction. And right now, even gambling has less friction than crypto. And you're seeing that in the stock. Market. But so that's in, the, in the US, right? Howard, because if you talk to younger people in Europe, they, they don't own NVIDIA and Apple and Amazon and Google. They, I'm just they talking trade. about the US, sorry, but I, unfortunately, I think I'm always talking about the U.S. because if you can't find U.S. investments with 300 million population and a somewhat working government and stock market, you're an idiot. We've said that from the yeah. beginning. Like, so if you have to go off, and by the way, your best proxy for an international tech investment could still be Bitcoin and Ethereum, but you don't have to pay two and twenty to get it. And if you really believe in Bitcoin, then do the go to a YouTube video and watch how to store it properly. You don't have to store in an exchange. And so I'm not against those. I'm just saying 10 years ago, there were ways to hold Bitcoin that weren't in a decentralized or centralized exchange. That hasn't changed. That, that's why Bitcoin is still at $27,000. Yeah. But there probably is a much lower number ahead if, if the U.S. truly takes it offline. And so the risk reward, I just don't get versus, you know, the risk reward of owning Apple in an up market or, you know, other tech stocks. So, so I mean, that's just my trying to work it through uh -huh. in my brain does it make sense to you at all yeah it does make sense but the us is only five percent of the world and the rest of the world you know is still heavy on uh heavy on crypto so i don't know how it's going to play out i mean your guess and my guess are just as good as any so i'll just let things play yeah. out personally i don't own any like i'm i just own us stocks so where uh, yeah and, and there there goes there but that's my point there's just people will not own it like people like you who keep, make markets for people, the, the, the people that trade and, and 
create liquidity in the system are just not going to be there because it's just uh, the the technical headaches are uh, combined with the actual price action is not warranted of it. You you need to make money. You're looking for things that are moving. Uh, what else besides tech? I mean, Tesla is really interesting since um, GM and Ford announced that they're going to use Tesla's uh, charging stations. It seems like their charging stations are going going to become like mainstream. So we saw a big move. Uh, that is, they, that is, they closed that back is about the. I just thought that was always priced in. So I, you know, assume I got that wrong as usual. Uh, it's not a cheap stock, but you assume Ford and GM. Are going to they're just they're just not capable of doing what elon did he's been he's 10 years ahead of these idiots yeah, yeah. So, so i thought that was priced in obviously it isn't so the stock can run a long way i don't know what people like i definitely wouldn't have shorted tesla it looked like death uh for the last year now it looks too good to be true it's coming back out no it doesn't just it's not just coming back up it looks fantastic he has free marketing on Twitter. He's he's loved around the world for his satellites. And now he has a story to tell again. This is a, this is a real story that GM and Ford uh, are, are serious about this, right? That's an American story now, yeah. which is you're not just backing Elon, you're backing GM and Ford. And guess, who's good, guess who spends a lot of money marketing? GM and Ford. So if you are short this, you have you are nuts. God bless. Uh, could work, but you are now fighting an incredible machine of marketing that's going to spend money, and Tesla won't have to spend a dime on that. Yeah, they don't need to as of right now. Yeah. Maybe five years. In, from in now, essence, I should have bought the stock, uh, but as an ETF owner now, that I own the Qs and, and the S and P. I own it. Like I can't trade that thing. And I don't know what the bearish case is now, right? They're, they're, the Y car won the car of the year. Uh, the geeks still love it. Um, you're not going to buy it if you're not going to buy it because of its politics. You don't you don't control the market. Uh, you're you're a small percentage of the market, and there's just too much there's just too much power behind it with GM Ford, and he's got a story, he's a great storyteller. So. Good on him for pulling that one off. Yeah. But I'm yeah. sure it was him selling stock uh, in the low, you know, in the mid hundreds not too long ago. So he, he you know, he, he, he's definitely torched a lot of his own capital and Twitter and making that deal happen. So the market has a way of, as smart as Elon looks, it also had a way of smack him in the forehead on the way down. Of course. I mean, he said he regrets selling, but no one's perfect right, selling because he put yeah. himself in a position where he was forced selling yeah yes the other big story is still probably the biggest story uh this year is still ai and uh we see uh new companies uh, mentioning ai on a almost daily basis and for the most part you know they're they are rallying and and they're all all sides of them it's not just nvidia amd and microsoft and google at this point we're starting to see uh more and more smaller names joining the rally and i'm thinking oh, that wow. this will be a just huge by their offices let me look at a monthly on that they're what are they a, tech company? a huge trend for the next um Good. Uh, few earnings quarters when we're going to see more and more companies outside of tech mentioning how they're using ai to optimize just yeah. because they saw that you know just that, another reason why crypto if, if you're a crypto company and Gensler's got you in your sites, AI doesn't really help you. You know what I mean? So crypto is quickly pivoting to their own AI stories. Um, but again, you know, be careful where you're speculating right now, people. Like, again, speculation is entertainment at this point in, a, in the world. But uh, there are good ways to speculate and bad ways to speculate right now. But anyways, there are so many good setups, Ivan, and there's going to be so many opportunities on a pullback here. Um, I would say the thing that still scares me is rates and uh, they're still just, high, and it seems like the Fed it, might be willing to keep them high for you know at least maybe a few more months just to see if something. It's not break. hurting them. Yeah, it's not hurting them. I'm saying they are not. They. This is why I think they're acting on crypto. It, it hasn't hurt them. It will hurt. Like Ivan, if you. 
need to upgrade your home, you can't because you your your price of your home triples on the next time you buy a home. Yeah. Uh, that loan, like it, that is America's wealth is tied up in real estate. So there is to be careful. Like this is not going to be a straight up market. There are the leaders have tremendous balance sheets and are great storytellers and are very diversified businesses. And they were the first to bounce. But like you said, we're already getting into some frothy behavior in the shit companies. Definitely. I mean, we saw yeah. Carvana, Beyond Meat, g yeah, not, There's no new story here. This is a shitty company that's lied. No. It's just been a fraud. So, you know, a 500% rally is fun, but don't kid yourself. Like, uh, there's a lot of yeah, problems with a lot of these companies. Yeah. Oh, Peloton yeah. rallied and then just pulled back quickly. Yeah, I mean that's what they usually do, you know, pop and then come back. Yeah. Every time I get on my Peloton, I'm and I just am mad at the company because it's like a great product, and it doesn't do anything that I want it to do other than like let me spin my wheels, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just pathetic. Just pathetic that that's not a software company. All right. Uh, I think I've said my piece. Do you have anything yeah. else? I think that's all. Let, let's uh, finish with that. All right. Where are you today? I just came back from Greece and uh, I'm back in Sofia and I'm going back to Greece in 10 days again. It's really beautiful. Isn't Greece amazing? Amazing. Incredible, incredible food. I really like it. Yeah. Incredible food, reasonably priced. Government's pretty stable for a rare moment. Uh, great time of the year to be there. But yeah, the food and accommodations are great. Um, the I'm going to be over at I'm going to be at a DraftKings day in Boston. I'm kind of excited to sit with the exec team. I know if, I know the CEO. I've had him on the podcast, but I'm spending a day at, at uh, my first time maybe since I was a little kid. I don't even remember being. I'm going to be at uh, Fenway Park for DraftKings day and just getting seeing a lot of sports startups, sitting with the exec team. So I should have some insights there. That's amazing. We can't yeah. wait to hear. And then I'll be uh, back in San Diego by the middle of the month. So we'll. When are you back in San Diego? Uh, July 2nd. Okay. See you then. All right. See you then. Bye. Bye.